All right, sweet. Do you know what you're saying? No. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ben Curry. I'm a park ranger here in Queensland, Australia, and you're in the field with Jamie. <laughs> and this is and in this the is field. It. Yeah. Oh, it's not as bad. I've done live TV. Oh yeah. With Koshi and Mel, and oh my goodness, that was with penguins. <laughs> See, they're talking about penguins, and then we're putting thermometers up their bum and all that on live TV, and <laughs> it got really weird. But anyway. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it did. That was back when I was the zookeeper. <sighs> All right, whenever you're ready, but good to compose. Hi, my name's Ben Curry, and I'm a park ranger, Queensland, Australia, and this is in the field with Jamie Hall. Hello and welcome to episode six, this time in the glorious Australia. And I am joined by a bit of a local legend as far as I'm concerned, Ben Curry. Hi Ben. Hey, how Thanks are you? Thanks for doing this. Uh, as always, just have a quick brief look over uh, the gear. So I'm on the same OM Systems EM1X and um, Ben has also got an OM System. So what are you shooting with today? Yeah, just uh, I suppose my new Olympus EM1 Mark III. Um, Quite new to the family, only about eight months I've had this now. And how are you liking it? Because you also used to shoot on Canon in 90D, was it? You had uh, an old 700D Canon. 700D. Yeah, so it's this is world. a massive difference. So, and how have you found the in-camera stacking and bracketing up to the game in terms of your focus stacking? Yeah, definitely focus stacking. Um, it's, it's made a huge change, just learning how to use it and the best um, settings to use. It was a bit of a challenge, but plenty of guys out there helped me out. Cool, so you'll see some of the advantages of the in-camera bracketing over some of the DSLR stuff that we've done, or I've done previously. And today we are in Brisbane, and we're in a bit of a nature park that's been a bit of an initiative from the council, and hoping to find a few things here, uh, amongst some of them probably some spiders, maybe some archies. Yep, hopefully, yep, hopefully find some archies. Um, I was here a couple of weeks ago and found three or four different species of archies, so it'd be nice. good to Anything get else apart from the spiders? Um, no, not really. I suppose that's my, my passion is spiders, so. Just in I, case you couldn't tell, I mean, look. got this nice big shirt on, obviously yeah. a bit of a spider file. Not that these episodes aren't all 100% on spiders, I do try and diversify, but they're just so cool. Yep. What can you do? Yep. All right, let's go and try and find some spiders. Ready? Yep. Let's go. always the way you come to this big like beautiful green area and the first thing we find is on the bench got this absolutely huge weevil certainly by anything in like UK standards but I mean it's a good uh, almost coming up to like an inch in size um, you've got a funny common name for these hey what do you call them I know them as wattle pigs wattle pigs <laughs> yeah um, but it, you said the what genus was this one in Leptopius, I believe Leptopius. I'll see if I can get it. He wants to come onto my hand. I just thought I'd move it onto some stuff but show you the size. Absolutely chunky compared to a lot of other weevils which are absolutely tiny. But this thing's a bit of a beast. Very cool little dude. I'm sticking up in a tree.
So straight away in with some spiders. We've got um, a pretty common one in here, an orb weaver, and you can see some examples of the uh, stablementium that Jerry spoke about on the last episode. And he's got a bit of prey here that he's just having a bit of a munch around. But they see these, um, see this species quite a lot. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. Definitely. It's like a mussel. Yeah. So one of the things that you got me, or you were one of the people that were getting me a bit more into using was iNaturalist. Yep. Uh, you've logged quite a lot of the stuff that you find on there, right? Yeah. So this, for example, so this Katie did is one that you said you've not seen before, right? No, not before. So I just wanted to sort of talk about the advantages of iNaturalist and everything. So I mean, I don't know what this is. I've never seen it before. But I can quite simply find out what it is and log it through iNaturalist. So I can just go into this app and I'm going to load up the photo I've just taken. I haven't done a test on this, so it might not find anything. So I'm just going to see what it suggests for me and things to see. So straight away, very similar. There we go. 32 spotted Katie did. Do we reckon that could be it? It does look pretty similar. Yeah, it looks like an early stage of that, right? It's a juvenile photo of possibly oh, yeah. someone suggesting that 32 spotted Katie did, so yeah. like a little baby nymph that looks compared to the same, adult. Though. Yeah, yeah. So I've narrowed it down to Brisbane, but you can see also the amount of observations yeah. for certain species. Katie did. So 26, that's a lot. I think I've only found two. <laughs> so I can just select what it is. Pretty happy that's it. I've got my location in there already. So I've got to do is share that. Got this fair observation. And then this will get um, sort of backed up by other people who will then confirm the sighting. And then it goes down as a sort of confirmed ID like a sort of research grade sighting then and that, that can actually be used in terms of citizen science and other conservation efforts as well as just a good little log for yourself. Um, quite a few different sort of professions and jobs around uh, nature-based activities and animal stuff. Hey, so tell us a bit about your um, your your profession history. I studied, I suppose, marine biology, ecology at university. Yeah, and then got into uh, aquariums and large public aquariums, zookeeping that sort of stuff. You were looking after, you were saying penguins and... Penguins and platypus, seals, dugongs, yeah. crocodiles, and then, That's crazy. yeah. Being so close to them, it's a bit of a, uh, a privilege. And is it, it was a good zoo, was it? Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of, um, worked closely with, with, you know, fisheries and stuff, um, doing a lot of breeding programs, you know, seahorses, obviously the little penguins, um, so a lot of, you know, breathe and release, helping out with the acoustic listening stations for your grain earth sharks. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, because they were tagged and then moved on to, um, yeah, up here being a park ranger out in the bush. So I'm really curious what sort of, um, what sort of responsibilities do you sort of do now as in the park ranging, the sort of stuff that you have to do in terms of, um, caring for the environment and the conservation like what's some of the initiatives that that you get that you sort of carry out uh, i suppose just the, the main thing is just the yeah protection and you know conservation of all the natural and cultural significance of national parks um being so close to brisbane you get um a lot of yeah public going up into the bush and i think nowadays 
you know, um, the way things have changed, a lot of people are getting out into those green spaces, you know, for, for health, mm. you know, not just physical, but mental health. And it's just, um, yeah, great to see. In the last couple of years, a lot more people coming out in the bush. And you do, um, you do stuff like control burns and, and stuff like that. That's, yeah. That's really interesting. So what's the, uh, the sort of idea of controlling the, 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 the burning and the stuff that you do? Um, when we do the control burns, we're just trying to do, I suppose, burns at a low intensity. Um, yeah, fires that will remove some of the fuel and, and the weeds. So it's actually like a fire prevention as well? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, eliminating the risk of, um, yeah, I suppose, wildfires when the, I, the conditions aren't the best. And then you're also trying to re encourage uh, regrowth of stuff. Regrowth right? of, yeah, the, the grasses make it more open. You know, get rid of those weeds. Um, that's one way we get rid of weeds as well as, yeah, other other methods. Um, you know, obviously through the use of herbicides, but then just naturally, yeah, pulling and cutting. Um, so pest management, fire management, and then obviously recreational management of, um, yeah, the, the, the areas that people come and visit, day use areas and stuff, and then you leave some of the other areas more natural, um, as well as, yeah, dealing with some threatened species so there's a lot of threatened or vulnerable plants and fauna yeah in right the national parks around here yep oh yeah what's that coming out of his i think it's just caught oh okay in between, in between his, his um wing? yeah <laughs> that's funny i'll try and take that out of his ass Nice one. Oh, on me. So I asked a couple of questions, uh, Australia based. Um, have you got anywhere that's been one of your favourite places to shoot? Uh, recently ticked off a big uh, yeah, bucket list item when we did our trip out to Central Australia. Yeah, right, you out drove through, out there, eh? Yeah, out through Queensland, across to uh, Alice Springs and out to Uluru and Katajuto and then back down through South Australia. You did thousands of kilometres, right? A couple of thousand? Yes, seven or eight thousand kilometres. Seven or eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was just seeing, yeah, how big Australia is and how, yeah, varied it is from just the desert. And any, any particular highlights on that route that was sort of really stunning? Um, I suppose just the, 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 the colours of, of Uluru changing as it went from in the afternoon to night time in yeah. the sun um, and then just many highlights of, of reptiles and finding um, yeah my first thorny devil yeah right That's pretty cool and then I suppose just um, we were lucky enough to get out to yeah the central Australia in between all the flooding so I suppose I'm everyone I've mentioned that it's lucky to go out to the desert and see it actually so green. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that was unbelievable, you know. Was that yeah, time sandwiched of... in between floods, eh? Hey? We had loads yeah. a couple of months ago. It was horrendous. And then not too long ago, you just about went went the right time. Yep. And then just obviously with the water, the, the wildflowers was just unbelievable out there and just seeing how lush it was. Okay, what's um, sort of one of your best species finds? Um, I suppose it's just got to be any of the, the peacock spiders, really. Right. Um, you've seen firsthand how small they yeah. are, so just be able to spot them. And how many have you logged now? Oh, it's got to be oh, seven or eight, maybe. Nice. Maybe a few more, not as much as the WA boys. but. Yeah, no, I think we need to go over there for a visit and um, yep. go and help them discover some new species for sure. Exactly. That's, um, yeah, it'll be another thing to do is to get over there in South West, West Australia. I'm going to come for you, Flynn. I'm going to come and shoot some spiders with you. So have you got any shot that is uh, sort of your favourite or you're the most proud of? Um, I suppose my, my first, yeah, photo of a male peacock spider dancing and displaying yeah. to a female. I found the female first and then waited around um, for a while and then, yeah, lucky to get the male to come along. 
So that's that's probably it, really. And it's been years since I've got a shot like that. Yeah, right. So when that was a few years ago, was it? A few years ago, when I first started getting into macro photography. Because we went out for a, a shoot uh, looking for peacocks. We saw a couple of dancers, but couldn't get any shots because it was so quick. And yeah. It started, then it stopped. Yep. And the same for Flynn. Like, I know that he... Um, he just recorded courting for the first time, or copulation, should I yeah, say, that sorry. Yeah, cool, seen that. Um, and he'd shot, you know, shot them hundreds of times and found loads, and it's the first time, and that was really cool. That would be awesome to see. Oh, yeah, and another shot that I'm pretty happy with is um, the time I found the magnificent bowler spider female. Oh, yeah, that's incredible. And, uh, yeah, first spotted the eggs and knew exactly, yeah, what it was then, and then found her on the outside of a retreat. And that caught, they got shortlisted for a cup of tea. It was your first first was, competition? Yeah, first competition and nice. um, yeah, put that in for, I think, invertebrate portrait. And uh, yeah. Hard category, that one. Yeah, it was a tough category. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a really crazy spider. And where did you find that? Uh, at Conservation Park, just, just north of here. And um, yeah, just in the creek line. Awesome. So plenty of, um, yeah, the egg sacs and stuff, so it'd be good to get back there. Um, it's probably around this time last year, actually. So get back there and um, yeah, have a look. I'll have to get a photo of that. Definitely need to meet that guy for sure. Yep. So this is what we are here for. This is the species that we were kind of looking to target today, which is the Archies of the Triangle Spider. Uh, I posted a few different uh, ones of these before, but this one is super cool. Uh, which one do you think this was, Ben, sorry? Oh, I reckon it's an Archies Altycephala. Um, I think common name's high-headed Archies. And you had travelled a bit to try and see one of these before, right? Uh, yeah, I found um, this species for the first time during Christmas, New Year's holiday, visiting family down in New South Wales. So to see one up here is pretty cool. And again, just same shape, but the colorations are so different, so varied between each individual. The one I found was quite white. Yeah, this one's much darker. One of the things I've spoken about a few times uh, is really getting comfortable for a, a good focus stack. So found this really cool species, the Archies. So I've actually cut this leaf off and put it on the floor uh, so it can get really, really stable. Because on that loose leaf, kneeling in that uncomfortable position, it's just never gonna happen. I'm not gonna be able to get that really good, clean, deep stack. So now everything's super stable. It's nice and low and uh, <laughs> I just had to film we were laying down a couple of weirdos, but this is kind of what we're always doing. We always find yep. ourselves lying down prone to get, you know, that top shot of the target species that you want. And this is um, an idyllic, pretty special one and the one that we're looking for. So we'll definitely be dedicating a bit of time trying to get some top shots. Ficatus, you say it? F U R. Back at that, right? I thought it was something else, actually. Yeah, Ficatus. Ficatus? Yeah. Okay, cool. What, what, oh, what is there a common name? I was just thinking of something. Forked. Forked, there Forked you go. Which shows really yeah, clearly yeah. on the males compared to the females. Yeah. It looks, okay, cool. that's how straight away I tend to know. Really cool um, species here. So this is the, the forked triangular spider and you can see why because it's got these uh, real prominent forks on the back there this is the male but the females are generally a bit more orange do you think a bit more orange and larger 
larger abdomen without the forks and I suppose get up close and personal and check out petty palps. You've shot them before, haven't you? The green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good cool leave it. Yeah, so cool. Oh, Colour on. Yeah, that was um, some nice shots from earlier this year. It's blogs like this that they make me know that I'm in Australia and happy to be here. Like just the colour and the vibrance and everything. It just makes me feel really lucky to be able to see this. You get them in another coloration. I don't know if it's different between male and female, but you get some nice purple, bluey purple colours instead of the green. Yeah, I, I found that like a lot of these sort of jewel bugs that have iridescence and stuff, they can be quite varied in um, patterns and colour. Yeah. There's a shitload of them. Yeah. Even on this um, sandpaper fig. That's the tree, right? Yeah, sandpaper fig here. You've got uh, lots of them up there. Oh, yeah. And there. That's a, does it actually there. grow fruit then? Yeah. Edible? Um, oh, I've never tried it, but I suppose it's edible. I always say, like, I need to get better at my the tree identifications because it can be so um, handy for finding different bugs and other stuff. Like. Yeah, because certain well, longhorn beetles, I believe, there's certain species that only like yeah, certain plants to lay their eggs and obviously grubs bore into. Um, and then, um, yeah, I suppose some of your butterflies and caterpillars and all that, they're so specific, aren't they? So quite a cool thing here that I've had to see for ages. Ben's just spotted. He always eagle eyes. What have we got, Ben? Uh, just, a, I suppose, a group or cluster of these little baby shield bugs, jewel beetles. And you think they're they're freshly hatched, you reckon? They? Oh, they're so tiny, yeah. They've just all come out. You shot these before, like you, you posted a picture not so long ago of something pretty similar. Yeah, something pretty similar with these guys. Um, they were, some were still in the eggs and some were coming out. But uh, yeah, just the colour on them. I suppose that red and black, maybe a bit of a warning, you know. Change location. We've come to this pretty glorious rainforest. Um, funny enough, on a place called Mount Glorious, or Myala is the area, and you can see like just such a different uh, kind of topography, and it feels really ancient here. And this is ideal for loads of different stuff. So we'll see some other fungi here for sure. And what what else might we find here? Um, another type of archies. Yep. Um, some of your harvestmen. Yep. Different beetles. Another cool uh, group of spiders you tend to get up here in these more cooler, moist environments are your trapdoors and funnel webs. Oh, that would be awesome. And some species that are... They're normally on the ground, are they? Yeah, on the ground. Nice. And um, except at night time when it's the right time, they'll be out wandering around the males looking for females, but yeah. So another species of archies here. Uh, what, which one's this one, Ben? Archies bitchly, I think it's, you pronounce it. So you can see on this one, just on this leaf, it, you just can hardly notice it. It's small and just pretty insignificant looking. Um, they don't use webs for catching their prey, so they are ambush hunt hunters. So they will sit there waiting for an unsuspecting victim to come along and then they will sort of pounce on them. But they just have these craziest shapes on their ad abdomen and textures. Just love them, super cool to find. Have you got any species that uh, you've not found yet that you're after of the archies? Uh, there's a species that you sometimes get in the rainforests and that, um, Archies bulbarensis, I think. Yeah. So there's that one. And then there's yeah, a couple that are starting to pop up. 
like you're saying about the abdomen, the, the patterns and the textures, and they've almost like the curdless, the got like a face to them. Yeah. So what was it that got you started like properly in photography? Like when did you start being a bit more serious with it? Um, I suppose the first time I found a first peacock spider. Oh yeah, it was the, sp the peacock spiders that made you. Yeah, really I was out start. doing a, a health check on a dry vine forest for work, and yeah, as soon as I spotted them, I sort of knew what they were, but never really, yeah, looked into them much. And then that was it. I was hooked peacock spiders, and then after that, because I was dabbling around with, you know, just my 18 to 55 with your magnifying glass on the front. Yeah, right. And then I reversed the 50 mil. Oh yeah. And tried that for a bit, so then... Um, so that's a really interesting concept. So it's actually how I started doing my first macro shots. Um, it doesn't come out very well, but basically, within reason, a lot of lenses, especially on DSLR, if you remove the lens and literally turn it the other way around, it kind of becomes a macro lens. Yeah. And I started doing some of that, and that was... I even bought a little ring for the hole in the sensor to oh, okay. uh, actually then screw it in so it used the filter thread that oh, you have right. on the front to then screw it on properly. Yeah, yeah, the reversal thread or... Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. reverse thread. So I bought that and then obviously when you had it on normal, I had it set to, you know, F8 or something like that and then you turn it off. Yeah, yeah, right. Or, so it stays at F8, I think, and then you had to reverse it and flip it around so it was stayed at F8 and... But yeah, the good thing with digital, as um, a few people have been asking and... I think Brendan might have mentioned getting into macro, just digital, yeah, cameras just take a thousand photos. Yeah, right. And you know, if you get one or two good shots, you know, even he makes mistakes still, so. Unless you're Jerry and you only have like 50 shots on your card. If he but... deletes them after every <laughs> one, yeah. So one thing I've never seen before that Ben's just showed me, um, pretty cool is a, a, a trapdoor spider. Now we won't actually see the spider, but you show me what I'm looking for in terms of the trapdoor, which I've never really uh, known what I'm looking for. So uh, this is that, hey? How does yep. this all work? Um, just got this nice little lid made out of the earth. And if we gently... So that's the little earth lid. Just there. And you said best time to try and catch them is at, is at night? At night time, yeah. They tend to come out more. They'll sit at the end of the edge of their burrow with their legs out waiting. And um, when you spot them with your, your torchlight, you tend to, yeah, move slowly. And don't make any noises and touch any of the sticks and leaves around them because they just shoot back down the hole. So I try and keep all your light and all the movement away from it to try and yep. catch them. Yep, and then... Yeah, I don't know how many shots I've taken. We pretty much have only got one shot. As soon as the flash goes, yeah, we go flash again. Flash, they're gone, so. All right. But, That's uh, super cool. Yeah, so right. these ones have the, the doors, and then there's a lot more that you have through here that have, um, yeah, no doors, but they're still a, yeah, trapdoor spider. Awesome. One for the list to find later. Night time. So sometimes you get the trapdoor spider holes, and they might look quite small, but... Um, the spiders are tucked up inside, so when they do come out, they can give you sometimes a bit of a fright how big they are. Yeah, right. So there's probably a tree in the middle of it originally, and that's all died off, and then the fig tree's what's left. So what? Strangler fig. Right. So they'll start off as a tiny thing and then put their roots down, and they'll strangle the plant, so they use the plant as the, a ladder, right. and then eventually the in, inside of the plant, or the, the host tree or whatever, dies off, and now you're left is this skeleton inside the strangler fig. Right. No tree in the middle, just the strangler fig left. That's why it's all, all hollow. Right, it's fucking massive as well. Oh, I've found some, you know, in Diagla National Park where I've gotten inside it and climbed up. Oh yeah? I don't know how high, yeah. <laughs> They're just a lot bigger than this, but yeah. That's very cool.
Right, what an absolutely awesome day. Uh, it's always great when you get to see all the target species. Saw like three, four species of archies. Yep. Got a weevil, got some beetles. Dream Australia day. Thanks for showing us around, mate. Perfect toast as always. All right. Look forward to seeing you again. Check out Ben on Instagram, ben.j.curry, and look forward to the next episode. Thanks so much for joining us. Just going to get a bit of video on it. Why are you so exposed, you fucking Oh, you're coming with you? I'll turn around and wait a little.